Welcome, gentlemen. This is Sean Busy from Be Real TV. I am in the house with James Monkey Schaefer from Corn. What's up? And I'm in the house with Chris Garza of Suicide Silence. Guys, I want to say thank you for taking your times out of your busy schedule for doing part of this interview. And so, you're welcome. <laughs> so let's begin, Monkey. This is the 21st anniversary of your landmark self-titled album. And we're actually here at the last day of the show. Yep. So we've gone on the experience that you had for 20 years and you've seen a band like Suicide Silence on the bill. How does that fit? How does that go for you? I mean, <clears throat> when we decided, you know, who we were going to take on tour, we wanted somebody that was, you know, passionate about what they do. We wanted a band that was heavy. We wanted a band that our fans would, it would translate well that our fans would understand and uh, they have it all. They have all those elements and I think that our fans have really enjoyed seeing some, a, a really heavy band play with us. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, um, how did when how did you find out about uh, the tour and stuff? You remember like where you were? Uh, I was at home and I got a call from our uh, the manager. He mentioned, hey, Corn's going out. And then we already had a tour lined up in Australia. Oh, wow. I did I did hear something about that, actually. So I, I wasn't sure you were going to be able to do the whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. they, it, they were talking to your camp already before they even told me. Then once you told me, I'm like, we're dropping everything that we're doing. And uh, that was it. And now we're, we're here in real life. It's crazy. It's nuts. Thursday, so with you being heavily influenced by Monkey here, how does it translate? No way. <laughs> how does it translate to you that you know you're playing nightly with one of your guitar heroes and with one of your all-time favorite albums? Very. Uh, I remember the, the first half. It was uh, it was very hard to be uh, present. You know, to be present in the moment because especially now where we are in our career as a band you know it's not like like it was three years ago when we're all like partying drinking and i'm not really there so the fact that this tour happened in this part of our lives and my mind personally it's it was like wow you know you're, you're this is grateful because you're, you're 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 there in the moment oh yeah and uh it's it's wow and, and like and and you're you're on the stage and it's the same side as you know monk I'm like what how the hell did this happen <laughs> you know hey, it's funny because uh each night sometimes you know each night i'll look down and i'll see some of your pics on the ground i was like oh cool yeah, yeah. and it's kind of like you know a little like confetti mm. or whatever from you guys and i always you know i think artists kind of play off art inspires art bands mm. inspire bands and um yeah it's kind of cool to know that you guys were up there rocking just before when we are it, it, it leaves an energy you know everything resonates yeah. in frequency and um including music obviously but yeah. uh I, you can feel the the, the energy still it still resonates and yeah, dude, there's residues of it and yeah. and your picks are on my <laughs> i was like hey wait a minute and i i, I would go to your to your rig and like jacket pick <laughs> all right <laughs> it's, it's crazy like when when, when you're there and you're really there. Uh, it's like, wow, you can feel. Oh, wow, you're open up for corn. It's pretty cool, man. What the fuck? You know, it's crazy. Garza, I understand you wanted to have a question for Monkey. Yes. What was that question? During uh, the writing of, of, of the first record, uh -huh. what sparked your creativity that was so pure, raw, and deep? Like, what sparked that type of pure art? Um, I think it was just allowing yourself to like, instead of listening with your, your head and your ears, like to open up your heart and like play, play like aggressive notes that you were feeling like that you wanted to apply to the music because I, and I told you this before, like your, your voice as a guitar player is the guitar. It's the speakers. It's that sound. It's up to you to strike the string, to translate that emotion into notes, whatever the gain or tone. 
And as a guitar player, you know, you have a, a really wide range of um, tonal frequencies that can emulate a lot of different feelings and note selections and what, what have you. But um, I think it was also Ross Robinson being able to peel back that and just not overthink things. And just if it feels right, then just play it that way. Just fucking dig into your guitar and just look straight ahead, you know? Don't even watch your hands, you know? You know, a little bit, like in your peripheral. But it was, it was, he was able to show us how, how to sort of do that. And we still use those methods now, 20 something years later. Um, but I think a lot of it had to do with his his producing style and the way that he taught me to just bring bring that fire every time you pick up that guitar, you know, whether it's a, a little ember or it's a full blown, you know, fucking forest fire or whatever. The world is on fire. Just be super passionate about it. And it's hard sometimes because you start getting caught up in the technical side of things and then it, it gets cluttered, you know, and it's usually the first thing that written is that comes that's you know that spontaneous spark that lights that fire and that's usually the best idea wow awesome monkey um want to know do you have a question for garza that you want always want to ask him um i i think how does it i, I want to know from your perspective because i I'm, i missed a lot of 10 years ago because i was partying and yeah and now you i feel like you guys are so much more ahead of where we were 10 years ago uh, you know like as far as like evolving as musicians and kind of as people you know I, i've seen a change in you from the last said five years ago um it must be as if it must be nice knowing that you're ahead of the curve in what you do mm, yeah i don't know if that's really a question but I mean, how how did you get there so fast? <laughs> Two things. One was the uh, 26 and uh, the whole 26 years prior. You know, I don't, I realized I wasn't present. I wasn't there. I wasn't like a trance. And then it was Halloween night three years ago. That, Whoa. Uh, yeah. It uh, was Halloween. It was Halloween. And, uh, when our singer passed away, uh, I was there at the hospital, and that was humans need they need extreme things to shake you up, to, yeah, to shake up your brain, to, to shake your your spirit. And that moment was my first moment of like just being there. I'm like, what the hell was happening? Wow. And then uh, that's when I started looking at the band uh, differently, uh, friends, family, wow. you guys, yeah. you know. And uh, it was that moment where all right, things need, need to change. And then once you, you spend your whole life, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, living a certain way, partying and stuff, and then you, you make that, like, that, that switch is hard. It's really hard. It's hard for years. Like, you, it is really hard. You got to rewire, like, your whole brain. So it was, uh, um, it, it, it was that. Yeah, you know, I can totally relate with that because we were on, on this tour called the Ballroom Blitz Tour, and... Uh, uh, we were in Iowa and Paul, Paul Gray from Slipknot came to see his play and about a week later he passed away and we, well we were we were going hard on that tour we were partying really hard and uh, right after the at the end of that tour was, uh, when I stopped I was like done because you know I, I felt bad for his family we went to the funeral and it was it was terrible it was terrible to see the, that many people hurt and affected by such a you know a tragedy yeah and it was just like man big reality big reality check mm -hmm. to reassess and reset and yeah. refocus and put yeah. my energy into my family you know take care of myself and then everything like the band and everything would fall into place and that was five and a half years ago wow yeah, man. Do you do you still find yourself trying to like rewire? Like oh, totally, totally. I have to uh, all the time. You don't see me hang out a lot after the show because I, I that's when I used to like 
party it up. Woo! And everybody would like, hey, let's go. Because I was wild. I'm still wild, though. <laughs> Just in a different way. I had to think about tomorrow. We got children. Yeah. Coming from this tour, everything's come from it, from a landmark album, from torches being passed from one generation to another, influencer to influency, you know, way around. What do you guys, both of you, are taking from this tour and an experience that the fans can see and know, whoa, this is something that has been doing for years? Mm, for me, I, I think it's, you know, I, I, it's been really about reconnecting with our fans and you know it's been we've never done the, the meet and greet that we're doing is <laughs> this is not an advertisement but it is you know we're all doing a meet and greet with everybody that's you know in the band and, and people come up to me i've waited 17 years to take a photo with the whole band and it's just really cool like it's really giving us an opportunity to reconnect with everybody like our, our hardcore fans throughout the country and um, it's really important to, to say thank you and, and that we appreciate them too that for so many years they've been very loyal so that's that's one of the main things that i can walk away and feel really proud of, proud of is that we got to reconnect with them we are die hard man man they are die hard too tattoos and great. and what's crazy now is that those songs are more inspiring now than we were years ago it feels it feels that way man when we play them it, it just there's something about it just that comes to life and i always say like a rec or a live show is you trying to recreate a record and get close as you can to it yeah live you know right in the moment it's another way to, to really access really access living in the present is when you're on stage you can really that door opens because you, you find yourself right on the brink of it, it's, it could all fall apart, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I often do that every night. I'm one of them, man. I'm one of those diehard kids. You know? Yeah. It's cool. All right. All right, guys. I want to say thank you for uh, taking your time out. And that's a wrap. Sean Busy for Bureau TV. Peace.